old girl loaded up. We got her chained down so she won't go anywhere on us. We're getting ready to pull out of here. We're going to head by a set of scales so we can see what the actual weight of this engine is. Didn't give us that much trouble. It went right up with the winch with a Dublin block, but she is heavy. All right, let's get moving. now so 8,000 pounds is old girl weighs pretty hefty all right hello everybody uh, let me introduce to you our newest addition to Stewart's garage a 1927 American LaFrance fire truck we just picked this thing up and we're going to get her running it's in real good shape we have heard it run before but we're the goal is to get running and driving so we can put in parades and eventually we want to be pumping this thing and maybe take it to competitions and fire musters and all. She was restored back in the 80s or 90s, so the paint is still in real good shape. It's been kept inside. Luckily, the person that had it before us, they had it in storage in different barns for about 15 years. And there's a few things that have been updated. Some things we're going to turn back the way it was, but our goal is to get looking as close as we can to the way it came out of the factory back in 1927. It's got a pretty good history, coming up on 100 years old. The truck was bought and maintained by Davenport its whole life. It was delivered in, in November of 1927 to Davenport, Florida. In 1927, these trucks were a lot more simple than they are now. Today, it's all electronics and everything. But on these trucks, they were very basic. They were utility. They were built for a job and they were built very tough and there's a lot of backup systems and redundant systems so that you'd make sure they'd pump when you needed it to. In 27, the American La France made some changes and they, they changed engines, they changed the rear end, the older trucks had a chain drive rear end, this one does not. Pumps are a uh, positive displacement pump. It's a rotary gear pump, 500 GPM. On this particular truck, everything that you see that's brass, the headlights and all the pump pieces, all that stuff originally was a nickel plated finish on it, but they stripped that off when they went back and restored it back in the eighties or nineties because most of it already wore off. The truck, you can see it's got a lot of fancy decoration. I saw the original picture of this truck. It was not exactly like this. It was more of a smaller pinstripe and it probably was gold leaf back then. This is painted, it's hand uh, painted and hand pinstriped. And the main line there is actually a sticker. Everything else is hand painted. You can see aluminum radiator on here. This one did ha does have an electric siren. Some of these trucks during this era actually had a hand crank siren, but this one's electric. It has a fire extinguisher on both sides. These holders that are holding this brass extinguisher, these are actually called flower pots. That's what they refer to them as. You can see it has a spotlight and a bell. That is not the original bell. Uh, we'll show you something in a few minutes that we're going to do to upgrade that. Seat has a couple of little tears in it, uh, stitching coming out. We're going to fix that. And you can see it has a wooden floorboard where the gear shifter and all is. You can see the pump is right back here and the pressure gauges and some of the adapters that was, came with the truck. This truck, the running boards were redone with more modern diamond plate. The original diamond plate will look like this. So that's probably something that we're going to upgrade and put this back on it. You can see it does have a wooden ladder. It would have actually had another piece on this ladder to make it an extension ladder and then a roof ladder to go with it. This is all that's left of the original ladders. This truck does have its own uh, pump and it has a tank. Uh, the tank is right here. It's probably only a couple hundred gallons, if that. And then it has two and a half inch discharges on both sides. You can see there's more of the decoration right here. Uh, this is a toolbox. Uh, whatever tools were in it are still in it. Uh, some of the stuff for working on the truck and some fluids and things like that. We still haven't gone through all that yet. But these tires are actually steel rims. Just a year or two before this, they had wood spoke rims on them. So around the mid 20s is where they started changing everything. They went from um, the wooden wheels to the steel wheels, they changed motors, uh, they changed a few other things about it. But for the most part, these trucks were the same for about 20 or 30 years, going from the teens all the way up into the late 20s. Got their axes on here, they got 
brass for the handrails. Again, all this stuff would have been nickel plated. It did have some upgrades, uh, more modern lights back here. It came with the original nozzles that were on the truck. These are American LaFrance nozzles. Move around to the back. This truck was set up for parades. So in the hose bed, they put benches. And uh, the floor is a little bit rotten. We're gonna have to redo the wood on the floor. But you can see the rollers here. This is so the hose would come out easier. Another neat thing about this truck that I'd never seen before, the handrail coming back here is actually the waterway for this discharge. I don't know what would have been there originally. It might've been regular hose, but the water actually goes through the handrail back here so they could have a line on the back of the truck. Hard suction, we got another nozzle over here. This hard suction was for drafting. Uh, this is the original hard suction. When we come around here, you'll see that it's in pretty sad shape. It's been weathered, it's cracked, the rubber has deteriorated. Uh, you probably wouldn't be able to draft through that. Not sure what we're gonna do with that yet, but we're definitely keeping, keeping the brass and uh, the original fittings on that. No tools on this side. Um, you can see the tire a little bit better and the steel spoke rims. Then you can see the water tank. This is the gas tank. Here's more fittings for the other side of the pump. This is a uh, relief valve for this truck. And then there's some other valving and stuff. This is the battery box. We've got a modern battery in there right now because uh, later on today, we're going to try to get this thing running. You can see the floorboard a little bit better on this side. Another fire extinguisher. This is how you engage the pump. This lever right here, when you pull it up, it actually pushes the clutch and puts in the pump gear. This is your throttle when you're pumping. So the pump operator would have been standing here. He could engage the pump and he addressed the throttle right here with this little lever. Now, something that's kind of cool about this truck is this engine, it's a six cylinder and it's a flathead. Um, but this truck, if you look in there, there's two spark plugs per cylinder. So each cylinder has two spark plugs and one spark plug is connected to a distributor. The other spark plug is connected to a magneto. So this truck had a magneto for ignition and a distributor for ignition. We'll come around on the other side and I can show you that. If you look right here, this right here is the regular distributor. And then back here we have our magneto. So it, it will fire on both. And the switch, you can either be on distributor, you can be on magneto, or you can be on both. And when you were pumping this truck, they would leave it on both to get the most fire, to get the most horsepower out of this motor. We're still doing research to get all the details about the actual horsepower on this motor. And some of those things, I haven't found the exact number yet. There's a, a little bit of variables. I needed to find out the exact casting number and stuff like that. But this is kind of in the process of us learning about this truck, figuring out all the details about the truck and, and talking to people that know a little bit more than we do. But it's going to be fun. This is going to be a good project. All right. Well, my dad jumped the gun a little bit before he bought this thing. So he's got something he wants to show you guys. Okay. So these old trucks... They, like I said, they had the hand crank siren. This one happens to have electric siren, but almost all these old trucks also had another alert device that they used on the trucks and it was a bell. So let's come back here and I'll show you. I had made the deal on the truck. We didn't have it delivered yet. We, we hadn't finished the deal with the money yet, but I went ahead and was looking and it just so happened a bell popped up and they're usually really expensive and I got a good deal on this one. And it's off of 1926 fire truck of American La France. So it's the same era, the right bell. We just have to figure out where we're going to mount it on this because that bell is not original. And you can hear it, it's real thin and it's more tinny. We'll show you the, what a real bell looks like. They're a lot thicker, real thick brass. So let's come back here and take a look. So it cost me $100, $102 to ship this thing because it's 33 pounds. And this isn't the whole bell. I have the, um, the mount and the eagle that goes on top is uh, in a box right now. But this is an original American La France bell. The bell is, you can come up here and kind of see how thick that is. 
pretty thick. And you can see that this is, still has the original nickel plating on it. These bells, I'm told, now I don't know this to be exactly the truth, but everybody I've talked to that knows about American La France said that when they were casting these bells, their brass, that they would melt a silver dollar a coin in with the brass when they would cast these things and it gave them a little bit more of a, a, a nicer ring. So, do you want me to ring it for you? Sure. Okay, you guys ready? Still singing. It's still singing. That real thick brass like that, it has a really nice sound. And can you imagine this truck roaring down the road? They didn't have mufflers on them, so it would have been loud. The bell's ringing, someone's ringing the bell, someone's winding the siren. Uh, you will have heard them coming from a couple blocks away for sure. But these bells are really nice. They sound nice. And uh, this one will be mounted on this truck once we figure out the exact place. They put them on the sides of the truck. They put them on the front bumper of the truck. They put them on the back of the truck. So we just have to figure out where we want it. This is kind of like the icing on the cake when you put it, these trucks back together and get them running is have a really nice bell so you can show off and, and ring the bell for everybody when you're going through the parades and and showing them off. But I'm proud of that. That's a, that's a nice find right there. Now we would be lying if we said that we haven't tried to do anything to this bad girl. We have tried to turn it over already and we realized very fast that she didn't have spark. So did some quick diagnosing and then we realized that we probably don't have a good coil. Dad ran up to the store, he got a new coil, uh, one with a resistor. It didn't have a resistor on it before and there's no inline resistor. So uh, that might've been part of our problem too on why it burned up. But we're going to install that coil real fast and get the ball rolling and try to start this girl. Something I wanted to mention that you old guys are probably thinking about right now. You guys know it has dual ignition. We got a magneto and a coil. So uh, why haven't we tried the other one? We have, and we still don't have spark on either one. There might be something else going on, but we're just going to go through the diagnosing slowly and try to figure it out. All right. All hooked up. Ready to test it again. Turning the gas on, just in case she wants to work with us. All right, moment of truth. Let's see what she does. You ready? Uh-huh. All right. Let me double check for our spark. Not sure which one's which, but we'll figure it out. All right, go. We got power going into our coil. We got power going out of our coil. So now we gotta go on down the line. You need a light. So we're going through here trying to figure out what's going on. We had some people helping us the other day and we did pull off the distributor cap. We pulled off the rotor. This tab right here was bent where it was over this connector here. So this was bent like that. So it didn't touch the center of the distributor cap where the power was coming in from the coil, this was in the wrong position. So we're gonna to try to bend it back. I don't know if we're gonna be able to and see if we can get it lined back up so that it will make contact. You guys probably realize I'm in a different shirt. This is another day. And so far our diagnosing has led us to the rotor cap. So we just bought another one. We're gonna go ahead and replace the points and condenser and everything while we're in there. And then hopefully we'll have some spark. Since we're doing one and it's cheap enough, we might as well do it all. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace the condenser and points and everything while we're in here. Starting with the condenser first. Just loosen it up. Oh, just lost a screw. And then there's our points right there. So the arc happens right there when they separate. All right, so these are the new ones. This is the old one. You guys, we just mentioned something about there being a hole in it, but there's supposed to be a hole in it. We don't work with points and condensers all the time, so. I've never seen one with a hole in the points, but I guess that's how it's supposed to be. So we're gonna go ahead and throw these bad boys on, throw the new condenser on, throw the new rotor on, and uh, hopefully we'll have some spark going to it. You can probably do the condenser like this. It sits in there nice and pretty. So we're turning it over so that we can set our point gap. Set your point gap when they're all the way open. So he's gonna turn it until it opens. Might have had it too far to start with. All right, now go. 
There we go. All right, a little bit more. All right. Actually, that's looking like a decent point gap already right there. Uh, we're going to double check it with our feeler gauges, then we'll set it. So the point gap's set now. All the screws are back together. I got to put this wire back on and tighten it down. After that, we're good to throw this cap on and see if she's got spark now. So dad bought this fancy new cap too, test fitting it before we uh, put it all back. We got this shiny new black cap. Got to transfer all the wires over. Keep the same fire in order. Make sure all these are on there nice and good. And then we'll be ready to turn her over. Well, we do have spark now. Yeah. Uh, only on the distributor, not on the mag. Here, I can show you guys real fast. Let me turn them so you guys can see them a little bit better. All right, go for it. All right. This is the distributor plug. This one's the mag plug. And the mag is not firing, but the distributor is now. So that's good. Uh, we were getting no spark to either one. So we're gonna put these spark plugs back in, give her some fuel, and hopefully she's gonna fire off for us. We're gonna help her out with a little bit of fuel in the carburetor, just squirt a little bit in there. Hopefully she's gonna fire off with the extra fuel. If that's the case, we probably have an issue with our carburetor. Go for it, daddy. <coughs> Wrong button. <laughs> We've been turning it over for a little bit now, and uh, we're about ready to test something out. So we're gonna check the compression real fast, make sure that we're good on compression. We think our fuel's good. We know our spark's good. So now we just gotta check compression. Now we're gonna take a peek. Cylinders, since we got all the spark plugs out. Just see what's happening. A lot of carbon buildup, but nothing going wrong in that one. Pistons towards the top on that one, looking good. Nothing wrong with the valves. Just carbon build up. That one's looking good too. So inside of the combustion chambers is looking pretty good. Nothing really too concerning. Nothing that's gonna mess us up. That doesn't mean that we have good compression though. Just running through the sequence of things that could be wrong with this old girl, even though we're pretty sure the compression's good, just good to rule it out right now. So we're gonna test each one and then I'll write the numbers down and we'll show you guys. Well, we got two compression testing kits. Neither one has the right thread size. It's way too big, so we're gonna have to pop out the old girl. All right. 70. 70? 70. 70 on cylinder two. All right, we put a little bit of oil in there just for the rings. Brody's just putting a couple drops of gasoline in each cylinder. I don't know if we're gonna accomplish anything or not, but we might be, be able to get the fire off without blowing it off. Main thing is just try to get this thing to fire and maybe we can get it to run. I think we have a, might have a problem with that carburetor. We may have to take that thing apart. Ignition. Let's see. Oh, Got some right. life. Got, Got some, some life. life. She needs fuel. Uh-huh. Look at that smoke. Barely see it in the video. What do you need? <laughs> All right, let's pop that carburetor off and clean it. So now we've got to pop this carburetor off. Two bolts, one there, one there. The linkage, choke's already disconnected, and then the fuel line. There she is. That is a big carburetor. Got a lot of heft to it. Pretty dirty too, but we'll take good care of her. Let's throw her on a table and get her apart. All right, so obviously I've never taken apart this carburetor. And I've only taken apart one other updraft carburetor, but uh, if you know the basics, it's really not that hard. They all work essentially the same. I always start with taking everything off just to clean it. If something looks wrong, you know, we'll replace it. But most of the time a carburetor just needs to be cleaned. Sometimes it needs a new gasket. If you take care of them while you're taking it apart, you're normally pretty good. So you guys saw the fuel come out, that's the fuel bowl. There's the fuel float. That controls how much fuel's in it. So it basically, whenever it's empty, it goes down, it picks that needle up and it fills it up with fuel. And then uh, whenever this float fills, it's gonna float on the fuel. So whenever it goes up, closes that needle that I got my hands on and stops fuel from coming in. There's where the fuel comes in, there's the needle, there's the float. Just a quick little crash course in carburetors. I think I found our problem here, if you guys come up here. This came out of that hole right there. You guys can see there's literally a plug of just crud. Oh, well, 
a plug of crud just fell out of there. And uh, underneath there is where the jet is. And you guys can see it, it's just gummed up in there. Luckily, I think we found our culprit on why it's not getting any fuel. That'll definitely do it. Comes from the bowl and then it comes through here and it gets sucked up from the, the vacuum that's created. It's gonna suck it up, the Venturi effect and everything. Yeah, it's not gonna suck it up if it can't go through it. I'm gonna pop that needle out, but I can tell you right now, I don't see any light through it at all. That thing is completely gummed up. The best test on one of these jets to see if there's any fuel getting through it is to put a light behind it, stick it up and look at one of the ceiling lights. Yeah, that's completely black. There's nothing getting through there at all. We're gonna just blast it out with some carb cleaner real fast and hopefully this clears it up and we don't have to let it soak overnight. Watch your eyes. Yep, you guys see that? So, hold it up to the light now. Oh yeah, it's clear now. See, you guys can see the light through it now. That was completely black before. So that's what you're looking for. Me and dad put a little bit of love into these things. And as you can see, the carburetor is uh, looking pretty awesome. Like we could polish this up and make it look really nice. We'll probably hold off for right now. Wait till we get it running. Doesn't take but two seconds to pop this apart. Overall looking really good. A lot better than it did before. It was coming off in almost a slime. I don't know what's in that stuff, but uh, dad found it on the side of the road and that stuff just eats everything. And this is just looking amazing. I don't think we're gonna have any problems once I put this back together. Also, if you're from Buffalo, uh, don't take it personal that your shirt's being used as a rag. Uh, <laughs> it's just the most convenient rag. Carburetor all put back together and uh, she looks almost brand new. She is all brass, it's looking like. Just absolutely beautiful. <laughs> But we're gonna throw this on the, the old girl. Dad's about to flush the fuel line just to double check we don't have sediment or anything. And well, hopefully she'll fire off for us. Dad just uh, just blew out the fuel line. That's what came out. <laughs> it was solid brown when it first started coming out. Here, let me turn it on again and see if it's running clear. Yeah, that's looking pretty good now. All right, you ready, Daddy? Yep. All right, I'm gonna choke it a little bit. You gotta mm -hmm. turn the fuel on. Yep. Give it a second so the bowl can fill up. Throttle gets stuck a little bit. That's all right. Okay, Daddy, you ready? Now, let me get up here so I can work the throttle. Yep. <laughs> yeah! The throttle's stuck. Try to lift up the throttle. I did. See what I can do here. There we go. Don't touch the throttle, my hand's on it. Woo hoo! <laughs> Alright, let's shut her off and put some water in her. Good job. Hey, mama. You heard it? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to come outside. She only smokes a little bit. <laughs> Just a little. Wow. Sounded good, though. Mm-hmm. Well, what are you thinking right now, Daddy? I'm a hap, hap, happy boy. I'm going to be honest. I'm surprised that this belt held on, like, at all. <laughs> it, uh, it's disintegrating. Look at the cracks. It's falling apart in my hand as I'm flexing it right now. We got her running, but now she's got to dry. So we got to do a couple more things first. Obviously, we have to finish off the transmission. We got to get some water in her. We were told that the cooling system has leaks. So we'll fill her up and investigate for any leaks. When I put the carburetor back on, I uh, sent it replace one of the gaskets. 
because it broke. So we got a new gasket for that. Take a quick peek in the rear diff, change the fluid, make sure everything's looking good. A-okay there. Not too much more. I'm sure there's gonna be some more stuff that pops up that we gotta fix, but this is a list for now. We'll start off with the transmission and then go from there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there's water in this transmission. Water? Yeah. That is not good. <laughs> I'm gonna take just a little peek. Just a little peek. Just a little more. We probably can't put a bucket under there, can we? The side cover goes lower than the plug does. You. Okay. Honestly, the transmission don't look too bad. It's looking uh, a little light surface rust. Nothing too, too bad going on. Flush it, fill it back up, figure out what our, what our drain holes are looking like, where they're at, and go from there. I already cleaned out this transmission for the most part. I didn't record it because I was alone. But basically, I just flushed it out with a diesel. Got basically everything out of it. Uh, right now, I'm cleaning off the fill. I found out where we fill it from. It's right next to the drive shaft. This stuff's so thick that if I squeeze the bottle too hard, it just overfills. So we're limited with how much we can put in at a time. I'm just sitting over here, slowly squeezing this bottle, letting it go down, squeezing it, letting it go down. Slow work, but we'll get there eventually. We're gonna go ahead and drain the engine oil. I assume this is a drain plug. It was a loose, so. Oil is looking good, but the guy before us, he drained it out. Also, the oil is looking pretty thin. This should be taking a 50 weight, and this is looking like probably 20 or 30. It's cold, and it's just flowing out. So supposedly, right behind this cover is going to be the screen for the oil pickup. And uh, we want to double check that, make sure it's not clogged. And uh, yeah, so hopefully it's right behind here. It's not like there's an owner's manual we can just check. Well, there is, but I don't know where it's at, you know. Suppose someone who has a 1927 American LaFrance owner's manual or a 28 or a 26. Hit us up. That'd be really awesome. All right. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Look at that, James. It doesn't sound good. It's like a... It's like a string or something, but it had oil on it. You need my light? So you can see? Uh, I'm not sure if that's the oil pickup actually. Oh! Ooh. That's a chunk. Yeah, there's a little bit of goop going on. Oh. Yeah, we gotta pull this pan. Okay. Better be safe than sorry. Look at that. No, we got a pull pull it. Oh my God. What the? Already? Yeah. Okay. We're pulling the oil out of it right now. Mm. Look at that. Yuck. Mm. Yep, pan's coming out. Well, now the pan's gotta be dropped, so we gotta add that to our list. If it ain't one thing, it's another, but we definitely need to pull it. When you check the oil, everything looked good because the previous guy changed it, but evidently he didn't drop the pan. Yeah, you can literally just scoop out chunks. The whole bottom of the pan's just we'll solid. Jack it up. It's a bolt. The only thing holding it is the bolts binding it up. And me yeah, and James are like, going it. Is it heavy? All right. All right, there you go. The it's bolts not as heavy out. as I thought, it's aluminum. Okay. Lower right. it down. All the bolts are out. That's not that bad. That's pretty bad. That's like an inch of gunk. Yeah. Yeah, but it's all in this groove down here. Oh yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's the this? whole thing. What? Zoom in on the. <laughs> that's. That's what about half an inch deep. Yeah. Right here. 
Oh, almost three quarters of an inch. Okay, let's see what it is here. Keeps our place marked for us too. <laughs> you yeah. stick it right there in the middle. Ooh. I think that's the deepest. That's getting pretty close to an inch right there. <laughs> almost an inch of gunk in there. They didn't have oil filters on them. So they would get gunk built up. So all the sediment, all the stuff just settles in the bottom of this thing. And luckily this pan is big enough that it was down there and it wasn't, hopefully wasn't going through the engine. No, the pickup was above it, so. Did the pickup look good? It had a little bit of crud on it. I'll show you guys in just a second. There's the crank. There's that oil filter. Got a little bit of gunk, but for the most part, oil strainer, sorry. For the most part, it's good. Look at that, it's just got a, it's got a pipe fitting right there. Take a peek up in there. You guys can see the cylinders, pistons, rods, got the camshaft right there. Overall, this girl's looking pretty good for a 100 year old engine inside. Shoot, I think the, the LS1 we took apart not too long ago looked a little bit rougher than this, so not too bad. This is a this is a pretty big bowl we got here. Two inches of sludge in this bowl. Glad we got all that out. I'm about to climb underneath her and start scraping the gasket surface underneath. And that way we can uh, put our make a gasket on it and go ahead and slap her on for the night, let it sit. And then hopefully by tomorrow it'll be good. Pan's all clean now. Got our gasket maker right here. James is just wiping her down with some acetone right now. Make sure she's clean. doesn't feel like they're up. So we got the oil pan all strapped up. She's torqued down. We gotta wait 24 hours before we can add oil to it according to the instructions. So we'll be back tomorrow. Dad's still playing with the rear end right now. Uh, I think we'll probably call it a night here soon. She'll be rolling tomorrow, hopefully. Well, it's the next day and I'm back. I'm alone today, but I'm gonna be taking care of the rear end right now. Gonna pop that cover off, hopefully get all that sludge out of there. It's looking a lot like the bottom of the oil pan when you stick your finger up in there. So we're gonna clean that out. All right, got the rear diff cover on. Now we wait one hour, then I'm gonna torque all of these down. Right now they're just hand tight. And then we wait 24 hours and then we can fill this bad boy up. So far, this thing has been a lot of fun to work on. Not just because I'm with my dad and James, but also because it's 100 years old and the way they did things 100 years ago is completely different than uh, the cars we normally work on and the tractors we normally work on. They're pretty close but they're slightly different. So it's kind of fun to learn the, the differences, you know, it's like, it's like you're starting over all over again, but it's fun. <laughs> all right, so we've gone through all the fluids. We've topped off and changed, well, we changed the oil, took the pan off, cleaned all that out, changed the transmission fluid rear end. The only thing left now is add water to it and see if the cooling system will hold water. And then we're going to see if we can drive this thing out on its own power. You excited? Yeah, I'm excited. We're almost there. <laughs> we're that close. We don't know if we can have a lot of leaks or not. So we don't want to put cooling in there until we check the system. Once we check it and if there's leaks and we can fix them, then we may come back and put cooling in there or we may just leave water in it. We got any water pouring out in there? Yeah, we got some brown, brownie water. Coming out of the valve? Or? Yeah. Okay, well we can... We'll just keep flushing it for right now until it starts looking clear. Okay. Starting to look better. Got some crusties up top.
Here, let me choke it for you first. I can't believe that. Thank you all for watching this video. This one was a ton of fun to record. I'm glad we finally got her running and rolling. The next video will be us trying to pump this old girl. Hopefully all goes well. Thank you all for watching. Please take care. Thank you again for watching our video. If you like to see our content, please subscribe. And of course, right here, 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 somewhere on the screen, there'll be another video. I hope you guys enjoy.